So the first thing I did for this build was uh, measure out where the amplifier control knobs are going to go. Uh, using just a regular pencil, I marked out um, where the holes are going to go for this thing. It's a 12 volt Bluetooth receiver and amplifier that I got off Amazon. Uh, pretty easy to power. Um, it has pretty good outputs left, right, uh, and a base output which I didn't use. And also, you can be it can be turned on and off by pressing the volume knob uh, in or on, whatever. Um, so I made out kind of a grid where to drill some of these holes. Alright, so after the holes were drilled, uh, this amplifier came with uh, some lock washers and a little hex nut on it so that it could be mounted bulkhead style onto the lid of the ammo can box. Uh, these were, you know, I, not the best quality but good enough to work. I did end up swapping out some of the washers for a little bit thicker ones uh, just to give it a little bit more, um, so it's a little bit more rigid on the lid. Then after everything was drilled and I kind of cleaned up the holes a little bit, uh, the amplifier fit right in. And I did end up removing those brass um, washers or brass uh, standoffs that you see. And this was just kind of a test fit. I wanted to make sure that they would all be uh, able to be adjusted and they would still close, uh, which it did. Then the next step was to mount the solar charge controller. Uh, links are all in the description below if you guys uh, want to do this yourself. Uh, so the first, process, first step was to make kind of a cutout pattern for the charge controller. Um, it mounts with four screws. Uh, I used a kit for some hex screws that I bought. Uh, pretty easy and then I laid out where I wanted the switch to go um, like I said the amplifier has its own on off switch so this turns on everything and then the amplifier automatically comes on uh, then you just have to turn it off I did have to re-drill this because the first hole was too small Alright, making sure everything fits nicely. Uh, this is probably gonna this is gonna come off later, uh, so I can solder all the cables and everything like that. And then I drilled the holes for the charge controller. Then I drilled a hole down here at the bottom. This is going to be where the 12 volt cables come out of or into for the battery. Uh, these are the only things that go cooked up to the charge controller that go inside the box. From this everything breaks out for um, the amplifier. For the screws I used M3x8 size hex screws. Um, like I said I just bought a kit on Amazon uh, for all the screws and nuts and washers. Uh, makes it pretty easy to put together and everything looks consistent. The hardest part was getting the first one in to hold it so I could put the, the washer and then the nut on the back side. Then using some needle nose pliers I held that in place and using my hex screw driver I uh, just tighten that up
and you can see these don't have much room in the back uh, the battery is going to go stuck up, stuck up against the charge controller using double sided tape and then these are the speakers that I used there's some old um, creative uh, it's from an old surround sound that I had laying around um, the surround sound burned out so I kept the speakers and these also worked out great because they have kind of a recessed mount so it gave me a little bit more room inside the ammo box um, just for clearance for the battery and the amplifier it was kind of tricky how everything had to be the right depth if that makes sense uh, for it to all fit um, you can see that half inch lift that it has on the uh, speaker lip um, so after I cut those out of the enclosures um, I just went ahead and soldered some cables to it um, here's that recess mount again and these are just 4 ohm 10 watt I think the amplifier is only like 25 watts anyways I did see a 50 watt version um, so these are more than enough and if you hook up a base channel if you have room uh, that will of course draw some additional power then I just laid these where I wanted to mount them and made a template the first one I mounted I did make it a little bit harder on myself you'll see when I do the second one for drilling the holes Now one thing I do recommend is going back with like a hot knife or, or a razor blade like I did and cleaning out the hole just to make it a lot smoother. Uh, because it is plastic it you know gets all nasty and then the heat from the Dremel um, just makes it look crappy. Uh, I wish I had a 3D printer so that I could print a nice bezel around it. This is what I was talking about for the second one. I just put the speaker in and drilled. Okay, so after that, like I said, I just soldered on some uh, just speaker cable to these. Uh, these were polarized, so you could see the plus and the minus there on the speaker tab. And I pretty much did this to both of them with about 8 inches of cable. Uh, like I said, the amplifier is pretty easy to hook up. It, it's written on the board, uh, left channel, right channel, negative, positive. And through the magic of YouTube, they all got installed pretty quickly. These were kind of a pain, too, to get the washer and uh, the nut on the hex nut on there because of the magnet, uh, the speakers magnetized. So, there we go. Then what I did is I found these terminals that I had laying around that happened to fit the 12 volt battery and I just extended them a little bit um, so that it would be able to be hooked up to the charge controller and still go in the box. Again, this isn't waterproof, but uh, if I buy a few connectors, it can be. I just tried to keep this as low cost as possible, which I still spent about, I don't know, 50, 60 bucks on all this. 
uh, mainly the charge controller and the audio amplifier were the expensive parts. Uh, everything else had pretty much laying around. Oh, and the solar panel, of course. Uh, but I had that from another project I kind of started and never finished. And then before I put everything together and soldered it, I did a test run. Um, so this red switch down at the bottom turns everything on, the amplifier and the charge controller. Then you can manually turn the amplifier off, uh, just clicking the volume knob. Um, it does have two USB ports. Uh, that's controlled by that separate red button on there if you want to charge your cell phone or battery bank or whatever. Um, but yeah, using alligator clips, I hooked everything up, it works. Um, And then again, I hooked everything up on the switch, directly to the battery, then to the charge controller. Uh, there's going to be a link down below to my website, or a website where you guys can see exactly how I hooked everything up. I'm sure it's not the most efficient way, but hey, it works, and I like the way it works. Uh, this switch turns everything on or everything off. I ended up making like a harness for all the wiring. Um, I feel like I made it a lot cleaner to hook everything up to. Uh, everything was kind of held together with screw terminals or soldered. Uh, so it should be pretty, you know, sturdy when it comes to, to the wiring. Then I just mounted the switch. Uh, came with a lock washer and a hex nut also. And then needle nose pliers to tighten it all up as well. Then this, uh, there was some order and all this chaos of what cable went where. Um, so again, if you guys want to, I'll share a schematic with you guys. Just leave a comment below and I'll send it to you. Um, Then on the amplifier board, uh, three pairs of cables went there. Power, speaker left, and speaker right. It does have an auxiliary port also. And a um, that white connector you see there is also an aux input. So if I wanted to, I could bring the 3.5 headphone jack out through another hole and uh, wire it directly into it. But I like the Bluetooth better. Um, that way you don't have to be plugged into this permanently. Uh, but then you could charge your phone and not be wasting Bluetooth battery through Bluetooth. And then these two cables you just saw go straight to the battery. And it turns on. There we go. Then after that, just dropping the battery in there and it all fit pretty well. It wasn't too difficult to fit in there. But yeah, there it is. It's outdoors. It's uh, You can't see it because it was really bright, uh, but it actually shows what current it's charging at. And you can hear the music playing. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. There's links down below for everything that I used. Uh, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.